This is AFTV with Mr. Marlon here. With how you doing, Marlon? You're right. I'm fine. You? Yeah, not too bad. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. You're welcome. Co-founder and co-owner of AC13. Yes. Yeah? Yes. So. Give us, a, give us a little bit of spiel. What is AC13 all about? Uh, AC13 is a car company um, slash lifestyle company now. Um, it's been going for 10 years. Uh, we sort of uh, buy, sell and bespoke to vehicles for anyone's specification. Cool. And what I find funny about this, right, your business partner is Andy Cobb. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So everyone's going to be thinking Andy, Andy Cole, Cole and Marlon, yeah, yeah, yeah. not that Andy Cole. No, it's not the Andy this Cole. This Andy Cole looks completely different. Yeah, it but does. It's a funny <laughs> little quirk. So how, how did it all happen? How did you go from like being a Premier League striker mm -hmm. to, you know, I'm not going to talk about the goals you scored just yet, but that'll come <laughs> up later, but Premier League striker and now you're now you're doing this. How did that happen? Um, just, again, with Andy Cole, my business partner, we just, when I signed for Nottingham Forest, my, when I got my first car, uh, was a punto. I like first <laughs> stereo, big stereo. Yeah, and yeah. He was the person in Nottingham to go to. All oh, right. So we formed a really good relationship, and then he wanted to leave his job and do something and go on his own. And he just we did. He loves cars, and we yeah. decided to to do um, a car company. So you actually set that up when you were still playing. Yes. So with with all of this, then like what what is uh, what is your customer base? You know, it almost seems like I've seen some of the clients you've had previously. Yeah. I, I know that you've had Alex Scott, ex Arsenal. Um, yeah player and uh, Robert Perez as well yeah, yeah. his previous clients so talk us through some of the some of the Arsenal uh, clients you've had and what what they had done with you guys as well it was um, with Robert Perez he had the uh, um, it was through his agent he had the uh, um, Audi RS6 I think nice. estate, which yeah. was very nice yeah. one, one of my favorite cars um, I think he wanted that for his uh, his family a okay bit of a quick car for his yeah, family yeah. Which is really nice to do, and then uh, Alex Scott, she had a Q5, cool, which is really nice. Um, she's she's a lovely girl as well, yeah, yeah, decent player as well. And going to strength to strength as well. She's doing really well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, really good, really well. Yeah. Pleased for her to be yeah. fair. She looks what good. I love about the fact that uh, Perez and RS6 is so understated, so unassuming, but it it's is got such a nice machine. A punch, yeah. That is literally Robert Perez as a player, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's it's like, actually, you know, you're all right. Yeah, fair. but the car's decent. It was really nice car yeah. to, for him to have. Definitely, yeah. So, um, what I was going to ask you about, uh, Marlon, is a bit of a touchy subject for me, right? Is it? Yeah, because Why? on the fifth of November two thousand and six, okay. I turned twenty-two. Yeah? Okay. And I'm a bit, I'm a bit annoyed because you ruined my birthday. Oh, why? Why yeah. was that? It's because you scored an 89th minute winner against Arsenal. <laughs> 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 and amazingly, when I brought my car off to you guys, um, that was around the time that West Ham beat Arsenal this season. Oh, wow. And the last time West Ham beat Arsenal was when you did that. So um, I was kind of a bit, I thought, you know what, no, I'm going to go somewhere else. I don't even want to come here. Can't be that bitter, surely, no. <laughs> and I saw it was the celebration, you ripped off your shirt, yeah, yeah. you're giving it large, you're it's really enjoying the time as well. Because obviously West Ham fans, uh, yeah. games like that, Derby games are really, really big games, exactly. to be fair. Do you remember that game? Do you remember the goal, vividly? I, I, I remember, because I, I got dropped that game, I think, and I was really... I can you say pissed off? I was, I was, uh, I was quite angry, um, and the game was just going free flow, and it was obviously nil nil. Mm. And I could just see Pards looking back at me, like looking back needs he needed someone to come on and yeah. change the game, and he's looking. So I was like put my head down, I'm like all right, if I'm gonna go on it, I'm gonna go and score. Mm. And that, that was my mentality really. And then he says, "Mark, can't get changed," and I went on. And the thing is, actually, I missed a chance. I missed an easier chance the okay. first time, probably about five minutes before I scored. Mm -hmm. um, I said, oh my God, I've got to I get another chance and then make sure that the second time. Going. That's really gutted. But, um, but yeah, that was. fair play. Because what um, what's the thing on fighting on the line? Didn't know he had it in him. Exactly. Wenger and Parsons. Yeah. That, that's what that game's actually famous for because they had that big bust up. And I think, you know, Arsene Wenger never really come across like that before. Where, like, no, it's so true. Fight, so true, yeah. he didn't. Because I didn't even know. Because after the game, like, we were sitting down in the change rooms and the lad says, Pards is having a bit of fisticuffs with uh, <laughs> Wenger on the line, which is, everyone was buzzing, and obviously hammering Pards because they thought Wenger could have him. Yeah. So <laughs> when did Pards come in? Did you fight, Did he say anything about it? On no, the... no one. The dads did, because obviously yeah. people was on the bench and saying, did you see Pards and Fink having a bit of a little scrap? Right, okay. So what, Pards just came in, didn't even mention it, just carried on? No, nah, he wouldn't mention it, no. Fair enough. I guess he would have been buzzing as you all would have been, having yeah, just yeah. beaten Arsenal. Yeah. So, um, do you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be really horrible to you now and oh, I'm going to give you a little test yeah yeah so I want you to tell me the Arsenal team that day oh wow that's yeah. decent um, Come on, give it a shot yeah Layman yeah Clichy yeah oh now you got me there that's good 
You didn't you didn't pre uh, preempt me on yeah, this one, did you? Yeah, this is a tough one. Um, <laughs> didn't know that. Wow, now you, what's it? Um, begins with a G. Yeah. Brazilian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the Invisible name? War. I'll give you that. Do about a solo. Yes, yeah. yes. I remember he was there. But there's two players that I would have thought you'd say first because they wouldn't be the ones marking you. The central defenders. Campbell. No. Double Invincible, one of these players. Yeah? Colo Torre. Torre, yeah. Yeah. And his partner that day? No, I don't know. Gallas. Gallas. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Now you bring back some memories. And it was Hoyt. Who was right? Who was right back? Justin Hoyt. Hoyt, yeah. Hoyt yeah. yeah. And then uh, we had Alexander Hleb. Yeah. I remember, you know, uh, for for your goal actually he had a little jewel on the left hand side and he lost it and played it and then I think um, I can't remember who it was that got the assist for you that day Matty Everton yeah yeah. and then uh, he played one to with Sheringham of all people yeah, and then went through to, yeah. Yeah. Gordon, I don't remember yeah. the goal oh, very, God, I do <laughs> remember it very well <laughs> it's like it my birthday. I'm telling you it ruined my birthday uh, and then it was that. Fabregas Rosicky and then tell me the strikers yeah, Fabregas Fabregas uh, Walter no no um a Dutchman and a Frenchman. Bergkamp? No. no. Van Persie. Van Persie. And the greatest striker to ever play in the Premier League. On Thierry. Thierry Henry. Can't believe we beat you, that team. <laughs> I know. That's what I was saying. It's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> it's crazy. And Admiral came on as a sub. Ibuwe came on as a sub and Flamini came on as a sub as yeah, well. Yeah, you gave me some flashbacks yeah. there. Yeah. But yes. it's, it's strange talking to you about that, and you've forgotten that you uh, you beat Thierry Henry that day. Yeah, no, I didn't even know because I oh, should be one. I'm not really bothered about yeah, anything else. Yeah. Come on, it wouldn't be really playing because I think we beat. We were the last team actually to beat you at Highbury. Oh right, okay. West Ham was. Yeah, but I want to talk to you about Lacazette and Aubameyang because yeah. you're you're a striker, and as a striker, you're in playing every single game. You want to be scoring goals for your team yeah, definitely. but when we look at Lacazette and Aubameyang they're two players I've got a great relationship on and off the pitch yeah. you know in the recent game against Newcastle actually they had a 1-2 you know Aubameyang came on the, came on the pitch it was on the bench 1-2 scores uh, Lacazette scores and Decent. it was an assist for Aubameyang and it was no surprise to anyone they link up I don't know I didn't watch the game fair enough <laughs> <laughs> but did you ever have that with a, with a striking partner where you yeah, have a great did. relationship you're like best mates or whatever but then there's that underlying competition and how do you manage that good question very good question um, it's, it's hard mm. obviously because obviously you want to be playing week in week out and then because I'm going from my experience being at West Ham where I had I have classes, top class players, yeah. like Bobby Zamora, yeah. Dean Ashton, Teddy Sheringham, Yossi Benayou, mm. and these are the players that I was up against week in, week out. Yeah. And I was sort of, parts made me the number one person, okay. and they were joining me, if you get what I mean, which, yeah. was, which was nice for me, but I had to, at the same time, keep my place. But I formed a very good relationship with, with Bobby, mm. um, Bobby Zamora, like yeah. you said, we, on and off the field. We just had an understanding where we are, where we did to be. We just looked after each other. And it looks like they, they've got that there, yeah. which is really nice to have. Yeah. And to go forward, if you keep that as well as a partnership and you get what's behind you sorting, feeding them, then it's sort of an unstoppable situation yeah. unless they fit, which is really nice, which me and Bobby had. Yeah, about a year ago, uh, Aubameyang gave Lacazette a penalty. And then very recently, because Aubameyang missed penalty against Tottenham, yeah. Yeah. Lacazette... Uh, said to Aubameyang you take this penalty and g even gave him a bit of a pep Pumpers. talk on yeah, the pitch yeah, and said you take this penalty against Man United then he went and put that one away would you have ever given Bobby Zamora a penalty? Yes You would have? Yeah because yeah. I'd do it with Teddy it's like the same thing you just said Teddy Sheridan because I didn't score my first goal in the Premier League and it was like getting to me fans were getting on my case which is a normal thing yeah. um, we played Aston Villa at home and I was playing up front with Teddy yeah. and Teddy pulled me to the side before we went out and said to me just have a conversation with me look tonight's your night just take your time breathe we, we've been flying and training stuff like that when it comes to you I'll just take your chance and the thing is my first goal came from him okay. he headed me in and then I, all I was going in my head is what he actually said to yeah. me and yeah. I just composed myself and slotted it in and I scored a hat-trick that game you know if that wasn't Teddy Sheringham in that story that would be a really nice story because <laughs> <it was. laughs> he's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Teddy's a legend, regardless of whatever oh, team he's man. played for. Come on, you know this. You're, you're a proper <laughs> Arsenal person, aren't you? I know. So I just can't. Honestly, yeah. yeah, no. Uh, to be fair, you know, Arsenal were good back in the day, and obviously under under Wenger, and I felt sorry for him because he, he was a, a, a great manager, mm. and obviously went, the way he left and how things happened, it, it, it's, it's quite a sad situation um, because he is Arsenal. 
Yeah, no matter how many people what you what they say that that's my opinion. Yeah. But obviously you had fans that wanted his head because you're not winning anything. But he done really well considering the teams that he's had. No disrespect to the players that were there or what happened. It's just how things go. Yeah, and obviously now. We'll see what happens, really. Yeah, I think you're right. You can't talk about modern-day Arsenal without talking about Arsene Wenger. He's yeah. a huge influence. But, um, but yeah, you know, I guess Emery's doing all right so far. Oh, he's doing really well. Yeah, yeah. well, what, what he's had and what he's got. It's no money in yeah. January. Obviously, he's going to need money to improve that team yeah. for next year. So what, what, what do you think about that? In this well, situation of being a fan, what do you think they need? I think we do need to realise that United, Chelsea, those two teams are going to seriously invest. Yeah. They're, they're not ones to sit there and kind of accept the, the status quo that is Man City and Liverpool no. challenging for the title. And if Arsenal um, you know, don't put their hands in their pockets, we're going to get left behind. And it'll be interesting to see what Tottenham do next year as well, because I find it, personally, and you're not going to like this, but a complete lack of ambition that you didn't invest a single penny in the transfer market yeah. to try and build upon your position you know, and, and try and challenge for a title. Because if you look at it this season, Tottenham weren't a million miles behind. No, they weren't. And, and, you know, obviously now we're, we're saying that the... They've had a bit of a difficult run in the Premier League. And I just think to myself, if I was a Tottenham fan, I'd be really aggrieved. Why didn't yeah. you go and invest as well? the same with Arsenal, though. It's yeah. They're, 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 uh, yeah. they're similar clubs, similar yeah. what, what they want and how they want to do things. And there's a similarity is what you've just said. is yeah. the same thing that's Arsenal's But well, that's why I think Arsenal hate, well, I don't use the word hate, but we really feel quite annoyed at our owner because we don't see that level of ambition. Yeah. And I worry you that... You don't know what's going on upstairs or behind the scenes. So the thing is with Arsenal, you're, you're spending... 70, 80 million on one player. You need five players. So mm. I don't know how you're going to do that and yeah. get the right players for that club. I think so the key for me is when we look at uh, our, our team going forward, there's some great, great players oh, there. It's, it's really good. It's at the back. We haven't kept enough clean sheets. No, We've conceded so many goals. Proper and if back four. Yeah. If we can sort that out. Solid back four. Yeah, proper exactly. old school, head it, kick it and give it to the people exactly. that play. And we've got Socrates, he does a bit of that, but we need more of that. Yeah, definitely. Club. But that comes at a price. But tell me, Marlon, who was the most difficult Arsenal player that you came up against in your time? Mine was Tony Adams and Steve... Yeah. Um, was it uh, Tony Adams? Not, uh, not Steve Bold. Martin um, Keown? Martin Keown. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I, I was... I was I made my debut there. I was Nottingham Forest. Okay. Uh, I was at, uh, at Highbury and I came on as sub and uh, all I could just see was... Them two, oh, mate, yeah. they are proper old school. Now you're talking. They, yeah. they scared me for a minute. Cool. But yeah, that's nice, yeah. And, and who really impressed you from, from when you played against Arsenal? Obviously, you would have played against players like Perez, Bergkamp, Henri, but which one player did you look at and just say, bloody hell, he's good? Oh, mate, God. To be fair, Ar to, Arsenal had some really good players because mm. you're, like, you're going like Patrick Vieira, mm. he, he, his technical ability and his engine was un undescribable yeah. how, how he worked up and down then you got over Mars oh. he was unbelievable he was rapid he was rapid wasn't he it was just a, a love when he just runs at people um, then you got Ashley Cole very yeah. under, understated but a very good left back probably one of the best left backs in the world I would say he's up there yeah. um, but on me he's just unbelievable I love him he's like a god he's probably up there definitely yeah. so he's probably a few of them and one thing I wanted to talk to you about, you know, we're talking about players of a particular era there. Mm. And now, to me, from the outside, it seems like now football is such a lucrative business. Yeah. You, you look at the, the TV deals that have been signed, there's billions and billions of pounds, and it seems like every player is earning a great salary. But, you know, the average retirement age, let's say, is about 35. Yeah. People, footballers are going to live for another 50 years after they retire. Mm -hmm. And maybe now, in this era, players are set for life because they earn so much. Yeah. But, so in the early 90s, you know, when the Premier League was formed and people who were in and around that era to, you know, before 2000 or whatever, especially those players, maybe didn't earn that much to keep them going and to keep them maintaining their lifestyles from, you know, retirement to pension age. Yeah, yeah. So obviously you've reinvented yourself really well, or well, I say reinvented yourself, even though you set up the company whilst you were still playing, but now this is your focus and you've managed to obviously do quite well for yourself. But is that a challenge? And, and do you feel that, that actually you missed out on a golden age? What are your thoughts about that? Wow, another good question. I love it. I love it. It's good. <laughs> well, good for you. No, it's good. Um, it's good to talk about, really. Because uh, my generation, like you said, it was a totally different generation to now because the money that's in the game now is, is absolutely ridiculous. So you should, players now should be 
Um, they didn't even really need to think about life after football as much as what I had to do back yeah. then because the money in the game and should be looking after yourself. Hopefully they're being advised and looked yeah. after the best possible way to think about life after football. But when I was growing up, we, we didn't have that. And um, it's sort of like when you're in that bubble, you didn't realise until you get out of it. And we do a lot, um, me and my business partner, Ricardo, we do a lot of our life after football to try and help right, them okay. and advise them that, it, you have to save your money. It's not all about because your ability will never go away. If you're a Premiership player playing week in week out, that will never go away. Yeah. But until when that stops, then you have to start thinking about life after football. So we do a lot of talks for the under twenty threes, eighteen to twenty threes, to try and advise them in that situation. What you're saying, That's great. but it, it is a different generation now of lifestyle and money and everything like that. So yeah, we it, mm. players do in my era, find it harder than it is now because it's yeah. much easier now because of the money. Do you, do you ever feel like, oh, I wish I didn't play back then, I wish I played now? Or, or you know, was that a purer time, a closer relationship? I don't think it's easier now. No, no it's easier in the sense of, um, like, passing the ball. and Because back then it was more physical. Yeah. Now you can't touch anybody. So <laughs> it's like, there's more pity-patty around and people fall over mm. obviously now you've got people diving left right and centre yeah, yeah. but then you, you're you standing up and yeah. you're, you're going because like, you've got like the shearers and that's not yeah. in my generation they're, they're scoring goals and yeah. they're tackling people centre half so that's coming straight through you and stuff like that so I would say in that sense it's, it's more easier to play now than yeah. it was back then but obviously the money in it now you've got to be a lot fitter yeah. stuff like that excuse me it is harder in that sense but easier in another yeah. but I'd say I'd rather play Back in my day, because okay. I, I like the the physicality and, yeah, and yeah. how the lads was like. You, you, if you're going to dominate a game, you, you're going to dominate a game, but you can't really dominate a game in this generation. It's more more technical, which is better. Obviously, yeah. you've got top class players that, when you're in the Premier League, is the the best league in the world, and now yeah. is the best league in the world. And you have to be good because when that ball's coming into you, yeah. you've got to look for pull up passes. I have to admit, you know, kind of being in your presence, seeing like your size and frame and that sort of thing. I just think, boy, you and Martin Keown, that must be one hell of a battle. Yeah, mate. Yeah. I love them things. Did you look forward them. to it? Yeah. 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 They're the games I looked forward to because it, it tests yourself as a striker because yeah. he's a top class centre half. And, yeah. and then obviously when you, when you doing training and you're practising and you're doing striker work, you have to dominate your opposition and my opposition was centre half so I had to yeah. dominate my centre half and when you're playing against likes with John Terry, Rio Ferdinand, Distan, yeah. we're talking about the big boys and, and um, what's his name at Man City? Um, company. company. Yeah. He, he's a good one to play yeah. with and to test your strength and everything but yeah I used to love playing them playing them games. Perfect. Marlon it's been an absolute pleasure. No, thank thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, thank I wish you all the best with Arsenal. Yeah thank you very much and also love the work you've done in my car as well so yeah, you know, decent. hats off to that as well.